Hi guys, now that we have understood what components are we going to use and what actually are we headed to making, let's understand the function of each component a bit in detail. So first one is wheels. We are going to use two types of wheels. First we are going to use two wheels which are the normal wheels. Now there is no real explanation of why we are using this particular wheel itself. Yes, when you are making a different type of robot, suppose which goes on different terrain, that is the land surface is very rough and all, or you need to travel more distance, then your wheel size, diameter and all that will depend. But as of now, it's just a toy car that we are making, right? So we can use these wheels, but two wheels are not enough to make a car run. One would actually use four wheels and four motors. But then if we can do something with less amount of hardware, then why not do in that way? So third wheel that you are we are going to use will be a ball wheel. I showed you this ball wheel. The beauty of this wheel is that it provides support. But along with support, this wheel can actually move in any direction. You can move it left, right, straight, back, in some cross direction, northeast, northwest. It can move in any direction. So now you might be wondering, what are we actually going to do with just two, two normal wheels, motors and one ball wheel? Well, as and when we go on making things, you will understand what is actually going to happen. Then, second thing that we are using are motors. This is the motor that we are going to use. So, the beauty of this motor is that it is bi-directional. So, can you see this? these two terminals here? I showed them in the previous video too. One is a positive terminal and the other one is a negative terminal. Which is which we will figure out in the next videos. So, what happens when you connect the positive terminal to the positive of the power supply and you have the wheel connected to the shaft that will move in one particular direction and if you reverse the supply that is if you connect negative of the motor to the positive of the power supply and positive of the motor to the negative of the power supply then the direction of motion that is the wheel connected to the shaft will turn in the opposite direction so we can move our car in front and at back you will be wondering then only two directions of motion is possible how are we going to take turns with our car left right turns right you'll learn that soon enough so this is a dc motor dc motor will require a dc supply a dc voltage which is 12 volts and a current of around 1 ampere and the motor has a specification that is 300 rpm rpm stands for revolution per minute which means in one minute the wheel attached to the motor will turn 300 times isn't that fast yes we are going to enjoy using the toy that we are going to make then we have the chassis and wires now the chassis this is the chassis that we are going to use is also known as the body body of the robot and let's get to wires now in wires there are two types of wires one is the single strand wire this is a single strand wire now just as the name goes and you can see in this picture just one strand of metal is present you use this wire usually with your breadboard when you want to conduct certain basic experiments on the breadboard then you usually use this type of wire which is known as the single strand wire as it has only one metallic strand then there is something known as a multi strand wire what is that now as you see here now this four strand wouldn't make it multi strand just look at this one this one wire has multiple strands of metal present right this is what makes it multi strand so for applications such we will use the multi strand wire 
what is the advantage over it it is more flexible than the single strand wire single strand wire breaks easily whereas multi strand wire you even if you have one or two strands br breaking out you will have the other strands connected so it is ensured that the current will flow let's move further the switch and switch box so for every switch there is something known as a pole and a throw i said it is a dpdt right so that st that stands for dual pole dual throw so first we will understand what is a pole and what is a throw pole is one terminal and throw is the extreme position of the switch that is where the switch can get connected so let's just see first one we have single pole single throw i am just explaining you all the types of switches so this is a single pole single throw spst the basic the most basic form of a switch it has one pole and one throw so as you can see this particular is the connection which will be connected only to one terminal so when it is connected to this connected to the throw when the pole is connected to the throw the circuit will be complete when it is not connected it is off okay second type is the spdt that is single pole dual throw so what will we have something like this it has one pole and two throws so the switch can either be in no connection state that is not connected to either of the throws or it can be connected to one throw or another throw okay the third type of the switch is a dpst that is double pole single throw hmm a bit difficult to understand let's look at the image it's not that difficult so this is a dpst so what will we have two poles so these are the two poles and just one throw now you see this dotted line here this dotted line means that both these are connected together so when you make this is the controlling switch so when you make this on both are connected to this terminals at the same time and when you have it off both are connected that is both are not connected at the same time so this is what makes it like two poles and a single throw so what is this actually one switch controlling two equipments at the same time suppose two lights are connected together when you turn on one switch two lights turn on at the same time getting it okay now let's look at dpdt what is it double pole double throw so how is dpdt actually work this is t1 t2 that is throw one throw two now i've written t3 t4 but i will explain you how it works and we have two poles so at one instant now as you can see just like here you have these two connected together so at one instant p1 will be connected to t1 and p2 will be connected to t3 and at other instant p1 will be connected to t2 and p2 will be connected to t4 which makes it double pole that is two poles and two throws but it isn't necessary that these two throws has these throws has to be connected to the same terminal you can have four different things connected together so it's something like just consider this case it might not be true it's just like if you turn one button on two of your lights turn on when you make that button off the first two lights which were on that is t1 and t3 they go off and t2 and t4 turn on getting it something like that the one switch which we are going to use is a dpdt it has such six terminals these two are the poles and these t1 t2 t3 t4 are the throws okay 
So this comes under the category of double pole, double throw. Next, what do we have? The AC to DC converter. Now, the input to this is 230 volts, 50 hertz AC signal. That is, we are, we are going to plug it in our mains. Output will be 12 volt DC and 1 amp. So, this was about the components. Now that we have understood all the components, let's move ahead and see how are we going to design.